<laughs> yes, I it no worked. Idea. Yeah, didn't do anything different, but now it works. You know what I did? I um, I kind of like I uh, kind of like cleared out the phone and then you know started it again. Uh -huh. Could have been my I don't know. Who 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 knows? Who cares? You're it's on. Working. <laughs> yes, I'm so happy that you're on. Everybody, thank you for all your patience. Thank you for joining us at Peeling Back the Label. This is da Dana. How do you pronounce your last name? Weidenauer with a long Oh, line. wow. I really messed that up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Weidenauer. Weidenauer. Mm -hmm. Dana Weidenauer. <laughs> okay. So uh, Dana is a retired FBA agent and FBI agent, and you wrote Behind the Mask, Beyond the Cabin, and Below the that, Radar. Is that correct? That is correct. It, correct. It's in the Undercover uh, series. It is. Today, yes. we're going to talk about uh, uh, Below the Below the Radar. Below the Radar. You have, have, did you have the more. book? I did. There it is. Yes. <laughs> and for everybody who's watching, that book, five, five stars straight through. It's a five-star uh -huh. read. Now, I'm not making oh. Thank you. it up. Go on Amazon and you'll see. Five star read. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I wanted um, to ask you a few questions and I wanted you to tell us a little bit about all like the juicy bits uh, behind uh, your book. Okay. <laughs> Below the radar. Because uh, now Dana has done a book tour with me and I do know a little bit but not a lot. And from what you told me way back when, I was like, oh my God, oh my, I, I was, uh, I couldn't believe it, the things that you were saying. But now you could say those things and then a whole lot more that, because I, you know, I have no idea with the third book, ah. <laughs> what happened with the third book. So let's, uh, let's get rolling and you have the floor. Okay. Well, all three of the books are based kind of loosely on cases that I really worked. So they all kind of have some fun behind the scenes um, stuff to them. But I was, I think Below the Radar is really funny because it's, in the third book, Lexi has a male partner and the male partner she's not so sure of, um, he's not so sure of her, I think from the start. This book is actually based on a case that I worked with a male FBI agent who I was actually romantically involved with and we were dating and we convinced the FBI to let us go undercover together. So we were a couple playing a couple in a long-term investigation. Now the long-term is 365 days a year. It, there's no coming in and out of the roles. It, it's a long-term assignment. And we did this for about three years together. So uh, it was kind of an interesting thing to be romantically linked to somebody both in real life and then as an undercover. Yeah, but um, I want to, I know though I want to know uh, okay I, I know the undercover part but I want to know what happened before you went undercover how did you go from not being a couple to being a couple well we I had just done a long-term undercover case and I came back um, and we met and that's when Bill and I started met first met and we started dating and I didn't plan on doing a second undercover but the FBI had a different idea so they said you would have to come back and do this and at that point, we hadn't been dating that long, but we were pretty serious about each other. So I just fought out asking him. I said, look, this case calls for two undercover agents. How would you feel about moving out to California with me and becoming a vegan and kind of living in a commune? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to tell me to go pound sand, but he was actually like, yeah, that kind of sounds like fun. I think we could do it. Well, then we had to turn around and sell it to the FBI, you know. And at first they were like, no, this is a terrible idea. Two people uh, together that long, that many, you know, you'll kill each other. You'll just literally kill each other. Yeah, like yeah. Have a real mess. Uh, but, you know, we talked him into it and we did it. And I'm actually happy to say that he's my husband now. So <laughs> <Yay! laughs> the, the romance worked out. But it was really funny when I was writing the book because um, I was really struggling. I was struggling to write the character of Blake Bennett. And Blake Bennett, of course, is the, the male FBI agent in the book. And I, I'd never struggled with writing a character as much as I was having trouble with, with Blake. And finally, my husband comes in one day and he laughs and he goes, why are you having such trouble with this character? And I said, I don't know. And he goes, well, I do. I, I know exactly why you're having trouble. And I said, well, why? He says, because 
everybody's going to look at the character of Blake and know that it's based on me. And you're having trouble writing a character with warts and, and issues. And he says, you got to put that out of your mind and you've got to write the character, just write Blake. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, and when you talk in front of people, just tell everybody all of the good parts of Blake are me and anything bad is fiction. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. a very smart man. <laughs> yes, that worked out. But it did, it was very hard for me to write a character that I felt that close to because uh, Blake was Bill in so many ways. He was based on him and had his mannerisms and had some of his even, even had some of his looks. So I'm writing this character and I'm having so much trouble putting Bill out of my head <laughs> to write Blake. Uh, so that it was a really difficult thing to do. But a lot of the stuff in the book, especially if it's funny or silly, it really did happen to us because we traveled overseas. The two of us ended up over in the Netherlands at um, a terrorist training camp. Oh. So we traveled over with our uh, American targets and we lived in a tent with no bathrooms really and no showers for 10 days. So anybody that thinks undercover work is like really romantic, they watch too much TV. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're, and that's exactly what I said when we couldn't connect, when I was trying to waste time. And I, I said, it's not like, it's nothing like TV. No. Like you're going to, you're going to tell us, you know, that it's nothing like TV. No, it, <laughs> and you just did. <laughs> it was, and, and that was the closest probably that um, we ever really got at each other as far as like annoying each other because we'd worked together for a long time and everything had been like hunky dory, but then we were under so much pressure and mm -hmm. we were in a situation where we were completely sleep deprived. And he and I both need our eight hours of sleep, I'll tell you. And at one point, he was walking on one side of the road, and I was walking on the other side of the road because we didn't even want to walk on the same side of the road together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and plus, you know, you're, you know, you feel grimy and this and that, and that's just already getting you, like, on edge and icky. And, and it's like you don't want to be bothered by anybody, let, you know, let alone your, your partner, even if it's a real partner, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. That, uh when we actually finished up, uh, the Dutch police didn't want us to leave country without debriefing us. So we had to take the train and we went to Den Haag and we got to Den Haag and they'd already had us a hotel rented for us. Thank goodness, because nobody would have rented to us looking like we did. But when we got in the elevators, the doors closed and they, they had a glass on the inside. And so we could see oh. each other for oh, the first no. time. And we were like, oh, no. <laughs> we Who are those people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 10 days, try 10 days without a shower. It yeah. is not a happy experience. <laughs> not a happy experience <laughs> at all. No. So, you know, um, I read um, Behind the Mask, not Below the Radar. Did the Below the Radar, was it also the uh, with the Animal uh, Liberation Front and all that kind of stuff as well? It, it actually was. Um, it's the same FBI agent in all three of the, right, three right. Of the books. Right, like, and the mm -hmm. second one kind of veers off and does a little bit something besides the animal rights stuff. But the third book brings us back to the animal liberation stuff. And it actually brings some of the characters from the first book back into the third book, which is oh, always okay. kind of fun. I love bringing okay. characters back when I can. Uh, and no, that's great. Yeah. And I just find it so, like, I never thought of, like, you know, somebody who is that you know an animal what how would you how would you call those animal liberator well, animal extremist yeah okay the um, animal extremist you think like like in my mind i'm like oh it's somebody who really loves animals and they want to protect them and they want to help them but when i read the book and you know they were being called terrorists i was like but after you read read the book and you see how people got killed and all this fires and you know yeah they might be trying to help but they're doing it in the wrong way you know exactly and that's what I, makes them terrorists but i i didn't realize they would go that far that's why like you said extremists they are going beyond extreme they're just I you have, know crazy God, i have I have so much respect for activists. Everybody thinks, well, I'm against activists, but I'm not. I, I have so much respect for activists, um, animal activists, environmental activists, because they're doing the, a, a good thing. And it's just a small fringe group of them that get so frustrated that they kind of go off the rails. 
And those people are very one dimensional. All they can do is think about how they're going to save animals and they don't really have a life outside of the movement, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So they get so absorbed in what they're doing that they don't stop and think about the ramifications of uh, breaking the law. They just mm -hmm. think I've got to do this and I've got to get the, I've got to get attention and it does get attention. You know, you blow something up or burn something down. It, it definitely gets attention. Unfortunately, it gets the attention of the FBI. Yeah. When you do stuff like yeah. that. No, that's true. But, um, oh, gee, let's do a cheers. Cheers. <laughs> what are you, well, cheers. what are you drinking? I'm actually uh, having a hard cider. Oh. A pineapple oh, good hard for you. cider. Okay. Yeah, good I've for you. Cheers. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, it's so exciting and it's just so interesting. And that and you know, by you writing these books, it, it, it helps people understand. It you know, it makes them aware, like I never really thought of an animal in the lab being abused. But oh, you think they're terrible. gonna treat them right, but according to the book, no. And I'm sure you did your research and you did and um, you know, it was just it, the 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 way they the animals, the way they were living is just, oh just terrible. It is terrible. And unfortunately, because of that long, because of the long-term investigation, and that I was undercover for so long, most of that stuff I saw firsthand. So it is horrible. And I love animals. I mm -hmm. mean, um, I absolutely love animals. I've always had a dog, and I just, I, I was susceptible to switching sides. The FBI was so worried because of my personality type; they thought I was going to go to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I'm not, you know, that's why I, it is. Most of that stuff is just, a, it's abominable what they do, you know, uh, especially the vivisectionists when they're cutting into the brains of live animals. I mean, it's, ugh. Yeah, yeah. So when everybody kind of sees. Stuff should be stopped. And Absolutely. I would, never, I would never wear a fur, you know, that the time working as an undercover agent changed me mm -hmm. as a person. You know, I would never wear a fur, um, you know. I was vegan for a long time. Now, of course, I do eat meat now, but um, I still think about it. <laughs> I no, feel no. guilty when I eat meat. Mm -hmm. no, no, I agree. But um, it, it, you know, it's it's a it's a you know, I know it's like a catch twenty two, eating the meat, not eating the meat. Um, but you know, where your where your side of the activist part is, you know, hurting uh, the 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 other animals you know what i mean like the domestic kind of animals mm -hmm. and stuff like that right yeah yeah and and you know like i said it's it's just the small group of people that cross the cross the line and and really get into the criminal activity but the ones that do you know they they get into building incendiary devices or they go into factory farms and they cause millions and millions of dollars of damage or they'll go into say a UCLA or someplace like that to a college and destroy all the equipment and millions of dollars of is gone and research is gone and you know for what they start all back over it's mm -hmm. not like they stop mm -hmm. yeah so did you do you do you know what they could do to if they don't test on animals then what would they test on do you, do you did you, you do you know that well, or is it like human some, is <laughs> yes i mean well a lot of things you you'll see will be a test on humans like um shampoos and things like that a lot of companies um will will be anti um cruelty free so that right they won't cruelty free testing. right right so we know and, they're not hurting yeah. animals and they'll use people i guess for those mm -hmm. yeah no, as far as the medical that's so interesting stuff, i've been told that sometimes computer simulations can simulate some of the uh, medical stuff but i think when it comes right down to it um there is no real substitute you know that's why mm -hmm. they use the animals mm -hmm. with a lot of the medical research as uh, to further amazing science so now you were said you were saying that you you were you kind of like were done with the fbi you didn't want to go on any more missions mm -hmm. right well the character um the character of uh lexi oh Oh, I thought you meant you yourself when you went back. <laughs> no, uh, the character of Lexi, because she had such a terrible kind of yes. encounter. The second book, she gets beat, beat up pretty bad as far as like her, the whole book, you know. And so by the end of it, she's, she's pretty, she's she, pretty messed up. Okay, she I'm sorry. I thought you meant you yourself. <laughs> I had those days myself, but, uh, but it, in the book series, it's definitely Lexi, and she needs a break. She doesn't need to be doing any more undercover. She needs to take time for herself, but 
Um, it wouldn't be Lexi if she didn't jump right back into another undercover mission. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. And I love, I mean, I listened to the audio book and I loved the, the narrator, uh, with the, with the, you know, this, the Southern accent. Oh my, it was so hey, good. Mark. If anybody out so, there, yeah, listen to the book. Wonderful. She mm -hmm. is a fabulous narrator. I love her. She did all three of the books. Yes. I highly recommend and all three books are uh, have have audio books i highly recommend it mm -hmm. i personally listen to it and i just i loved i love the southern accent she did, she did it job. perfect God. everything was perfect that she you know she did it was great it was really I good know, I, don't, I don't i don't know how she does it i i'm terrible at reading my own stuff out loud and she did it and my husband even after he listened to it the first time he goes she read the book better than it was in my head she oh. said, I thought Kate did oh. such a good job. What a, what a nice me. compliment yeah. that was. Yeah. 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 But she is really good. I, I have no complaints about her whatsoever. She was a wonderful narrator. That's why she did all three. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, you, picked, you picked a good one. So is there, you kind of were hinting, is there another book on the horizon with Lexi? Uh, not with Lexi. I have a fourth book done, but I switched genres completely with the fourth book. So it's uh, it's called the obligation of living, okay. and it's uh, it's more women's fiction. It's contemporary fiction. Very nice about a group of childhood friends that come together in their fifties because of a tragedy, and they end up uh, hiking the Appalachian Trail. They go on a through hike of the Appalachian Trail in their fifties. So, yes, wow. so most of it's all set on the Appalachian Trail. It's got some fun stuff too, but it's also got some kind of deep stuff. Uh, they go on the trail to help their one friend, but what they find out is by the time you get to be that age in life, everybody's got some baggage they need to unload. <laughs> so that's kind of what the trail's for. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, yeah I love hoping it. To get, hoping to get a publishing deal for it pretty soon. And when I do, I'll be coming to you uh, to say, help me. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you so much. And, you know, there's, no, I mean, it's getting better books about older women, it's, but, it, it, but we need more. Yes. You know, we de definitely need more. It has been getting better, but I'm so happy that you chose to write about older mm -hmm. women. That's great. I, you know, I'm sure anybody who's listening, because this will also go on YouTube as well. It'll go on the YouTube channel. Um, so whoever's listening, you know, over 50, those are the books. Everybody wants, you know, to, to read those type of books. And it's, uh, you know, everybody, by the time you get that place in life, there's... <clears throat> you've changed so much and you've experienced so much, you know, loss and betrayal and love. And there's just um, a lot that goes on in your fifties. Yeah. And, and you, uh, you have more confidence. You're not afraid to, to <laughs> sometimes you have no filter. That's so let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what made writing this book so much fun because they did, and they're all, they, they grew up together as children, but then they all went on to uh, live separate lives as adults. So then they're back together, getting to know each other all over. And right. as you probably know, there's nothing like that childhood friend. I mean, there's just something special about a childhood friend that you ate glue with or something. You mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm not going to ask any other questions about the glue. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I totally know what you're saying. And, um, but I don't know if, if, I don't know if children, have that today I don't I you know I, don't, I, I, I think, don't think right. they there's do so much uh, they're on their phones and their devices and that takes away I mean I'm sure we're probably close to the same age to where we went out and you didn't come back into the street lights came on or until you heard your mother yeah. calling for you yep and you had adventures with your friends on your bicycles and in the woods you know, you used your imagination <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I grew up where, when I did grow up because it was, mm -hmm. it was magical. You look back and you think of all the crazy fun stuff that you did that your parents didn't know about. <laughs> nope. Nope. I totally, totally agree. Um, a lot of, you know, I mean, with my kids, they did grow up with kids and they're still, you know, the, my daughter's in college. She's still friends with, you know, but it's, I don't think it's the same. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like she, she could say, oh, this is so-and-so. I've known her since preschool. But I don't think it's the same as when you walked to the house and, like you said, and you, you played with them and did this and that. No, parents drove to and fro and, you know, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So it's just it's just not the same. No. Not the same. I mean, you'd go through the neighborhood and you'd see where all the bikes were laying, and that's where you know 
which door to knock on. That's where all the kids were, where the bicycles were laying. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Such good times, so, you know? Yeah. So what else can you tell us? Is there any other juicy bits you wanted to tell us about eh, either any of the books, if you want to, really? I mean, um, the, the Behind the Mask and Beyond the Cabin, um, those books are just as good as Below the Radar. Do you, did you have any other, like, experiences and, and whatnot? Well, I'll, I'll kind of share something that's it, kind of personal, but um, I've written a scene, of course, where Lexi is drugged um, in Below the Radar. Ooh. But, and that actually really did happen to me. And I, I share it because, um, especially kids, you know, I say kids, but like college age people and young adults that are in bars and stuff, um, watching your drinks. Yes. But I was, I was in the middle of an undercover mission, actually. And um, I was there kind of to help. I, I was backed up more or less for a male undercover who we were worried about. So I had my drink. And the bartender was also an undercover FBI agent. So I didn't think I had anything to worry about there. And I had my drink set down in front of me. And unbeknownst to me, somebody walked through and dropped something in the drink. Or I actually switched them out, grabbed mine, and put another one in its place in a split second. And, of course, I didn't see it happen, and nobody saw it happen. And then mm -hmm. later we went back to watch the video and actually saw the exchange but it was like so it was split second it was just somebody walking by grabbing that glass and then setting another one down but like i said i the effects it was crazy i mean i was walking and talking there for a little while and i have no recollection wow. of anything that i said or did i got in did the they car. take you anywhere well, or no. luckily i was uh, with an undercover agent and my husband, who was also, well, my boyfriend then, who was mm -hmm. also working part of the undercover, um, he and I were riding back home together. So they traded off and I got in the car with him and he realized right off the bat something wasn't quite right. But he thought this undercover mission had gone off for hours. So he thought, we, and of course it was in a situation, it was a party situation. Mm -hmm. So he thought I was drunk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he, he kept asking, how much wine did you have? How much wine did it have? And I'm like, but I've had two glasses over the course of like six hours, which that would not have done anything. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't really think anymore. He just thought, well, they, they probably had a lot more than that. But then all the way home, um, he kind of realized, you know, something still didn't feel right. And then when I got in, I was just gone. I was passed out oh. completely. So the next morning, I felt like a train had oh. rolled over top of me. And he goes, Kylie, how much did you all have to drink? And I said, we didn't drink. I said, we had a couple of glasses of wine, but we didn't even finish the second one. It was just kind of sitting there. And he looks at me, he goes, there's a problem. So he called the other undercover and um, then they pulled the video and they saw the exchange of the drinks. Luckily, I'd just taken like a couple of sips. If I had drank any, drank any more, I, you know, I don't know what oh. would have happened. I'm not even sure I would have survived that because it, it hit me. And I wow. still, it's blank. It's like, I, the last thing I remember was pulling the door shut to get in the car. Don't have wow. any memory whatsoever. And, and Bill said I talked for like 40 minutes, you know, all the <laughs> way home. And I don't remember any of it. None of it. And Amazing. So it was such a scary yeah. thing. Now, did I, they, now, the person that did it, did they do that on, like, I mean, were, were you targeted? I was. I was targeted because of the fact that they wanted to get to the male FBI agent who was doing the undercover. He was kind of a money bag situation and they were trying to get to him. So they thought, well, we'll get rid of her, knock her out of the picture, and then we'll have him. You know, she'll go to sleep or something and, and then we'll have access to him. Um, and at that point, it was in the middle of, you know, it's like early dawn and we had to get out of there. And so we were kind of pulling the plug on things anyway. So we were leaving. So mm -hmm. it didn't work out the way they wanted it to work out but but even scary. though there's the fbi more than one fbi in that bar and they still were able to do that in a split second so if it can happen to you it, it can happen I, to anybody i know and at first, first i was really embarrassed because i'd spent most of my career working narcotics and i thought how did i let that happen how did i let that happen but like I said, you could, you would, ha you have to slow down the video to even see the exchange. Wow. And somebody just walks by and places the glass down and picks the glass up. And yeah. I was and it was like, you know, just a second. He's a 
and professional. Yeah, it was <laughs> he knew what he, 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 he had plenty of practice. <laughs> yeah, it was actually a female, oh, believe it or not. It was so, a female. Yeah. Ooh, that's even more. Oh, okay. So I know and then after that, and when I finally decided to, you know, talk about it to people, I, I would tell, especially college students, I said, look, if you're in a bar and you have to go to the bathroom, if you don't have a trusted friend to watch your drink, get a new one when you come back. Don't. But you know what? After you after you saying that to me, I wouldn't even get a. I would. I. I. I don't even know if I would trust. Not that I wouldn't trust a friend, but what is your friend really going to do? Sit there and stare at the glass? They're gonna, she's going to talk and and you like you said that split second. I mean, your your friend was the bartender. He he didn't see no. it, you know. So no, it's, I can't. That you are yes. This is a very good good story for everybody to listen to. Yeah, it was it was really scary stuff. Like I said, it was only just a couple of little sips of that too that knocked me. Wow. You know, out. It's like roofies. I think that's what they call it, right? Roofies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that it was roofies. Sure. Roofies. GHB. Something like that. It was. It was a really. Oh. I was like, I was for two days afterwards. I felt like a Mack truck ran over me. <laughs> and that, and like you said, that was only with a few sips. If you had, if you drank the whole glass, who knows what would have happened? Yeah, who knows? Who oh. knows? Because who knows oh. how much was even in it? You know, that stuff is. So yeah. But oh I my know, it was, goodness! After well, that, thank was, God that your husband, well, your boyfriend, was there yeah. at the time, and yeah, he uh, whisked you away and got you home safe. Yeah, he. I, he, he kicked himself because he said, I should have realized that something wasn't right. And he says, mm -hmm. I should have just drove straight to the hospital. And I said, well, it would have been a little embarrassing if you'd have drove straight to the hospital. I had actually been drunk. You know? I mean, well, here's my, you know, my partner at FBI agent, you know. And he goes, well, that's what I was afraid of. Can't, said, take, her out. Can't take her out anywhere. Because <laughs> he said his first instinct was something is just not right. I should take her to the hospital. But then he's like, but you know, uh, I don't know. They were there a long time, so he didn't. And I, I told him later. I said, "You can't kick yourself for something like that." You know, it was, mm -hmm. it was. Who would have known? Who would no. have thought? Yeah, uh, yeah. People, everybody would have thought that you, you just, you were drinking too much. You know, mm -hmm. they, because yeah. they wouldn't think that. Like that wouldn't be anybody's first thought. You know what I mean? No, no. It would, it would no. be your, your drinking. It's, yeah, unbelievable. Because I was such a minor role in this case. I mean, I was there to watch his back to make sure that nothing mm -hmm. was said about him later down the road. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. goodness gracious. So, this, it is. Boy, see, I was telling everybody, this is it. All the juicy information. <laughs> <laughs> now you were saying, um, Dana, that you were willing to give away a book. And what I'm going to do is, um, let's think of a, a code word that some the, the maybe whoever comments the, the code word um, down below and then we'll pick you know we'll wait a week because um, you know we'll we'll post it I'll put it on Facebook and all that kind of stuff we'll wait a week see if every you know get all the code word people and then we'll you know pick a winner from there so what should the code word be um, let's see FBI would be too obvious so how about badge? Badge. Okay. Okay. So the code word badge, just put it in comments mm -hmm. and you automatically are entered to win one of Dana's books. And um, if you read Behind the Mask, then maybe they could get the next book or if they yeah. read book two, then, you know, which, whichever book they want. Right. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Whichever book they want and whatever format they want. If they want a um, if they want a paperback physical book, I'm happy to mail it. Or if they want an ebook or audio book, whatever they want, whatever, whatever that's version so nice. they want. Sure. Oh, uh, that's so nice of you. Version. Okay, I, re I, I recommend the audio book. I, I, I'm with your husband. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I loved the audio book. It was so so good. It really put you right there, and I really. Um, with all the the voices and you know the narrator just did a great job and and you did a great job writing the book. I really oh thank you. Um, I felt I really felt for Lexi and um, I didn't like Savannah's boyfriend. He was a brat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like him from day one. I just could tell mm -hmm. he wasn't going to be very nice. Um, but yeah, the all you know all the books are great. Blow the radar, five stars. 
all the all the books all the books are five stars they're all really good i oh, really highly, highly recommend them i appreciate you coming on the show i guess and if it's an audio book they choose though I, I it's on audible so i guess they have to be a member of audible is that is that how that works um well if book. you're a, if you're a, um I don't know. Um, I don't want to promise. I don't, I don't know how that. Well, I don't. Not sure how that works. Uh -huh. um, I'm actually. Most I'm actually. I'm doing a book tour right now, and the the author is offering an audio book. But I don't know how she sent it. I'm going to have to ask her because I just gave the you know the the uh, reader's information, mm -hmm. and she took care of it. But I'm going to have to ask her that. Yeah, I was. And assuming, then I'll, and then I'll, I'll let you know how how Amazon. does she handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> and thank you so much for your okay. patience with sure. uh, coming on. And it, it's a learning curve, and uh, it's all good. I appreciate you just really sticking with it and uh, hanging in there with me. Well, when te technology works, it works really well. When it doesn't, it's a You're massive right. failure. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So thanks again for coming on, Dana. Oh, um, can you tell people where they, you know, where they could find you, like your uh, website address and maybe sure. your, well, you know, information? My website is danaridenauer.net. So um, that's my website. I'm on, um, of course, all the books on Amazon and all three formats. And you can get the books at any independent bookstore if you want. If they're not carrying it, they can order them because they're traditionally distributed. And I'm on Facebook as uh, Dana Ridenauer Indorf or Dana Ridenauer Author. And I'm on Instagram as Undercover Author. Yeah, I love that. that. That was yeah. a good name. You, yeah, that was good. And I've kind of given up on the whole Twitter thing. I, I don't know. I can't I, figure out Twitter. <laughs> I get it. You, can, you, can't, you can't keep up with everything. It's, it's just it's just too much. Yeah, so Instagram and Facebook is pretty much where I hang out. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dana. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, you have to shut me off, I guess. <laughs>